Savashura, there arose in the world twelve million Tathagatas, arhats, perfect and complete Buddhas named Viparshin. I honor those Tathagatas with sitting cloths, garments, fragrance, garlands, and lotions. I offered them service in the way that service should be offered to Tathagatas. At that time, at that moment, having become a renunciate, right there, I also remember attaining a prediction of unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. Soon thereafter, the last Viparshin to arise explained this Sangata Dharma Pariyaya, and I knew that. And then, at that time, a rain of the seven precious substances showered down upon the planet Earth, and then there was no more poverty among the sentient beings on Earth. At that very time, I attained a prediction of unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. After that, for a long period of time, I was not predicted. He said, "What was that time? What was the measure?" The blessed one said, "Sawashura, listen. A countless eon after that, the Tathagata, Arhat, perfect and complete Buddha Dipamkara arose in the world. At that time, at that moment, I was a Brahmin youth named Mega." At the time when Tathagata Dipamkara arose in the world, I was practicing celibacy in the form of a Brahmin youth. Then, when I had seen Tathagata Dipamkara, I scattered seven upala flowers and dedicated to unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. At that, Tathagata predicted to me. Brahmin youth in the future, in a countless eon, in this world, you will become a Tathagata, a heart perfect and complete Buddha named Shakyamuni. After that, Sarashura, I sat in the space above at a height of twelve palmia trees. And attains the state of forbearance with regard to unproduced phenomena, just as if it were yesterday or today. I remember directly all those roots of virtue from when I practiced celibacy for countless eons and was endowed with the perfections. Furthermore, Savashura. I established countless hundreds of thousands of myriad millions of sentient beings, individually in virtuous dharma. Therefore, Savashura, now having been manifestly, completely enlightened into unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. What need is there to mention that I wish to benefit all sentient beings? Savashura, I teach the Dharma in many ways to sentient beings. Whatever the form by which they are to be subdued, I teach the Dharma in that form. In the world of the devas, I teach the Dharma in the form of a deva. In the land of the nagas, I teach the Dharma in the form of a naga. In the land of the yakshas. I teach the Dharma in the form of a yaksha. In the land of the pratas, I teach the Dharma in the form of a prata. In the world of humans, I teach the Dharma in the form of a human. To those sentient beings who are to be subdued by a Buddha, I teach the Dharma in the form of a Buddha. To those sentient beings who are to be subdued by a Bodhisattva. I teach the Dharma in the form of a Bodhisattva. By whatever form it is that sentient beings are to be subdued, 
I teach the Dharma in that very form. Thus, Savashira, I teach the Dharma to sentient beings in many ways. If one should wonder why that is, Savashira, it is because just as sentient beings hear the Dharma in many ways, so too those sincere sentient beings will make a root of virtue in many ways. They will engage in acts of generosity. They will make merit. They will also go without sleep for their own sake. They will meditate on the mindfulness of death too. They will do such virtuous actions as these that are to be done. Due to having heard the Dharma, they will remember these previous roots of virtue that will come to be for the long-term aim, benefit and happiness of Devas and humans. Sabashura, that being so, as soon as the Sangata Dharma Pariyaya is heard, the good qualities and benefits in this way become immeasurable. Then, those sentient beings spoke to one another. They said, There must be something else also that, by having done and accumulated it, one will be manifestly, completely enlightened in the unsurpassed, perfect and complete enlightenment. And the result of the virtuous dharma of wanting to benefit all sentient beings will ripen. Those who have come to trust in the dharma will say, There is a dharma perfectly in accord with things as they are. The great ripening result of your virtue will be the unsurpassed happiness of the dharma. As for the ignorant, foolish, sentient beings who say that there aren't any dharmas and there is no passing beyond the dharmas either, your great ripening result will be to go to bad migrations. Again and again, they will be aiming for grounds of bad migrations. For eight eons, they will experience the suffering sensations of the hell realms. For twelve eons, they will experience the suffering sensations in the lands of Pretas. For sixteen eons, they will be born among the Asuras. For nine thousand eons, they will be born among the harmful Buddhas and Bishachas. For fourteen thousand eons, they will be without tongues. For 16,000 eons, they will die in their mother's womb. For 12,000 eons, they will become brown lumps of flesh. For 11,000 eons, they will be born blind and will experience suffering sensations. And their parents will think, We have suffered meaninglessly. The birth of our son was meaningless. Bearing him in the womb for nine months was meaningless. They will experience the sensation of cold and heat. They will also experience the suffering of hunger and thirst intensely. They will experience many sufferings in this life as well. Although the parents see a son in their house, there is no joy and the parents' hopes will be utterly dashed. So Ashura, in this way, sentient beings who abandon the holy dharma are aiming for hell and animal rebirths. At their time of death, they will be pierced with great agonizing pains. So Ashura, those who say the dharma exists, they are those who go beyond the dharmas, will be born in the north on Uttara Kuru for 20 eons. By that root of virtue, for 25 eons they will be born equal in fortune to the devas of the 33. 
When they die and transmigrate from the 33, they will be born in the north on Uttara Kuru. They will not be born in the mother's womb. They will see 100,000 world systems and these will all be called Sukhavati. They will see all the Buddha fields as well. After seeing them, they will abide right there in them. They will be enlightened in perfect and complete enlightenment right there. Sarashura, thus indeed this Sangata Dharma Pariyaya has great power. Those who have a mind inspired with pure faith to it will never meet their moment of death without having let go of their fears. They will also be endowed with perfectly pure ethics. So Ashura, there are some sentient beings who say, the Tetagata releases many sentient beings day and night, and yet the realm of sentient beings still has not been depleted. Many make prayers for enlightenment. Many are born in the worlds of higher rebirths. Many achieve nirvana. So why is it that the realm of sentient beings has not been depleted? The heretical practitioners of other traditions, wandering mendicants and naked ascetics had these thoughts. Let us go dispute with the renunciate Gautama. Then 84,000 Brahmins, heretical practitioners of other traditions and wandering mendicants and many hundreds of naked ascetics arrived there in Raja Griha. And at that moment, and at that time, at that moment, the Blessed One displayed a smile. At that, the Bodhisattva, the great being Maitreya, arose from his seat, placed his upper robe over one shoulder, set his right knee on the ground, and bowed down with palms together toward the Blessed One. He addressed the Blessed One as follows. Blessed One, since Tetagatas, Arhats, perfect and complete Buddhas do not smile without cause and without conditions, what is the cause of the smile and what is the condition? The Blessed One said, Child of the lineage, listen. Today, a great assembly will appear here in Raja Griha. Blessed One, who will be here? Devas or Nagas or Yakshas or humans or non-humans? The Blessed One said, Maitreya, today Devas, Nagas, Yakshas, humans and non-humans will all come here. 84,000 Brahmins will also come here. 9,000 million heretical practitioners, wandering mannequins, and naked ascetics will come, and they will dispute with me. I will teach the Dharma to pacify the disputes of all of them. The Brahmins will all generate the thoughts of unsurpassed, perfect and complete enlightenment. The 9,000 million heretical practitioners Wandering mannequins and naked ascetics will all attain the fruit of stream and tree. 18,000 million Naga kings will come and they will hear the Dharma from me. After they have heard it, they will all generate the thought of, un- of unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. 60,000 million children of the devas of the pure abodes will come. 30,000 million wicked maras and their attendants will come. 12,000 million asura kings will come. Kings, 500 in number, together with their retinues, will come to hear the Dharma. After hearing the Dharma from me, 
they will all generate the thought of unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. At that, the Bodhisattva, the great being Maitreya, prostrated with his head at the feet of the Blessed One, and after circumambulating the Blessed One three times, disappeared on that very spot. At that, the Bodhisattva, the great being Sawashura, arose from his seat, placed his upper robe over one shoulder, set his right knee on the ground, placed his palms together, and bowed down to the Blessed One. He said to the Blessed One, Blessed One, what are the names of those kings, five hundred in number? The Blessed One said, Sawashura, listen, there is the king called Nanda, the king called Upananda, the king called Jinarshapa, the king called Brahmasena, the king called Brahma Gorsha, the king called Sudarshana, the king called Priyasena, the king called Nandasena, the king called Bimbisara, the king called Prasena Jit, and the king called Virudaka. There are these and the rest of the kings, five hundred in number and each of them has 100,000 million attendants. With the exception of Virudaka, each and every one of them has set up for unsurpassed, perfect and complete enlightenment. 30,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from the eastern direction. 50,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from the southern direction. 60,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from the western direction. 80,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from the northern direction. 90,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from below. 100,000 million bodhisattvas are coming from above. And each and every one of them is abiding on the ten grounds. Then, in order to see the Blessed One, all those bodhisattvas proceeded to Graja Griha, to where the Blessed One was, and all those bodhisattvas, each and every one, had set up for unsurpassed, perfect and complete enlightenment. Then the Blessed One said to the Bodhisattva, the great being Savashura, Savashura, Go to the world systems of the ten directions and say to all the bodhisattvas, Today, in the great city of Rajagriha, the Tetagata is teaching the Dharma. Therefore, all you residents of the world systems in the ten directions, place your palms together and bow down in homage. Say this, and as soon as you have made it understood, come back immediately to listen to the Dharma. At that, the Bodhisattva, the great being Savashura, arose from his seat, prostrated with his head at the feet of the Blessed One, circumambulated the Blessed One three times, and then disappeared through supernatural powers. Then the Bodhisattva, the great being Sawashura went to the world systems of the ten directions and instructed the bodhisattvas. Today, in the great city of Rajagriha, the Tetagata is teaching the Dharma. Therefore, you should reply to that. Excellent. And on account of that, on this very day, you will receive benefit and attain great bliss. Then, having gone to the world systems of the ten directions, the Bodhisattva, the great being Sawashura, honored all the Buddhas and informed the Bodhisattvas. And in just the amount of time as, for example, a strong person snapping their fingers, the Bodhisattva, the great being Sawashura, arrives in the great city of Rajagriha, where the Blessed One was, 
and was present before the Blessed One. Then the Brahmins, heretical practitioners of other traditions, wandering mendicants and naked ascetics also gathered. Devas, Nagas, Yakshas, many human beings, the kings, 500 in number, together with their attendants, and 33,000 million wicked Maras, together with their attendants, also gathered. And at that time, the great city of Raja Griha trembled. A shower of celestial sandalwood powder rained down on the world systems in the ten directions. And a shower of celestial flowers also rained down and remained in a towering palace at the level of the top knot on the crown of the Blessed One's head. Also at that time, Indra, the lord of the devas, wielded a thunderbolt in the presence of the Tetagata. Then at that time, from the four directions, four massive winds stirred up the earth. After they rose up, they carried off the garbage, sweepings, and dust from the great city of Raja Griha. A shower of fragrant water rains down on the world systems of the ten directions. A shower of upala flowers, lotuses, kumuda flowers, and white lotuses rains down on the world systems of the ten directions, and they all remained as flower canopies above the heads of all those sentient beings. 84,000 towering palaces remained motionless in the space above the crown of the head of the Tetalgata. Within the 84,000 towering palaces, there arose 84,000 thrones made of the seven precious substances. On all of those thrones, Tetalgatas are seated and teach the Dharma. Then this galaxy of a billion world systems trembled in six waves. At that, the Bodhisattva, the great being Sawashura, placed his palms together, bowed toward the Blessed One, and said to the Blessed One, Blessed One, what is the cause? What is the condition for the display of such supernatural apparitions here in the great city of Raja Griha? The Blessed One said, it is as follows. To make it an analogy, a king robbed the head of some unstable man, while full of ego grasping, full of selfish grasping at things as his own, and also poverty stricken. That man went up to the king's gate. Once he arrived there, he insistently wished to enter inside the palace of the king. At that, the king's ministers and retinues seized him and beat him in many ways. Then, at that time, at that moment, the king heard that the destitute man insistently wanted to enter inside and thought, He is undoubtedly someone wishing to kill me. Thinking that, the king became angry and said to his retinue, You, take that man to a secluded mountain spot and kill him. Kill all his servants, parents, children, male and female slaves and workers too. After he had issued these instructions, they were all killed. And then his friends and relatives were pierced with unbearable agonizing pains. In the same way too, as soon as the Tetagata, our heart, perfect and complete Buddha explains the Dharma, just like that arrogant person, childish ordinary individuals also, with respect to the Tetagata, seized upon the form, color, marks, and shape as identifying signs and think it is the body of the Tetagata. Then, after they have heard many Dharma teachings, 
they fall into exceptional arrogance and speak all kinds of nonsense. Overcome by ego grasping and selfish grasping at things as their own, they do not themselves listen to this sort of dharma, nor do they proclaim it. Even when someone is explaining a sutra or a verse or as little as just an analogy, they say, we ourselves know, and they do not retain it, nor do they lend their ears to listen. If one should wonder why that is, it is because they have become full of arrogance in this way. Because of their extensive learning, they are not attentive. Those who keep company with childish ordinary individuals will not act to become endowed with this sort of dharma. They will not listen to words endowed with this sort of dharma. Due to their extensive learning, they become conceited. People like these publish their own compositions, they publish the prefaces to their own texts too, they deceive themselves and the whole world. They pointlessly consume public resources and having consumed them, they do not digest them well. At their time of death, great fears will arise.